That's right, Stacy. This community has been fighting a certain property owner over what they call excessive truck noise for three months, three years and counting. But the attorneys for the property owner tell us historically trucks have always been used on the land. Truck noise. This is what has brought these Center Mariches residents and attorneys before the Brookhaven Board of Zoning Appeals once again. As News 12 has reported, these homeowners are angry with property owner Jim Naples, a man who rents his property to a landscaping company. They say the constant racket is ruining their quality of life. Yes, there were trucks that came and gone over the years but they were on the other side, not right next to my bedroom window. The town building department did rule that the property is not zoned for outdoor storage. The property owner is appealing that decision. His attorney, Henry Thompson, says since the 1950s, trucks have been used on the land. They're going to, there's going to be trucks, even now, it, it, under the code currently. If we were to put a restaurant at one Wilcox, uh, is someone going to suggest they can't get deliveries? But board member Terry Carl says that outdoor storage is prohibited on that land unless you have a special permit from the town. My question is, what are you doing here? What, what, what relief can we give you? Homeowners like Genevieve Mead, who have been there for over 50 years, say the problem began when Naples bought the property. We still live there. We enjoy the place, but you can't live in peace. Now, the board did not make any decisions tonight. They will be taking a look at this issue again on November 7th. We're live tonight in Farmingville. Christina Renault, News 12, Long Island. Stacy Stone. All right, Christina. That's right, Stacy. Now, residents and city leaders tell us they are already hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst here. Now, the city is right on the Atlantic Ocean, so crews are already hard at work building a huge barrier of sand to try and protect this very large community. We've been through it before and uh, keeping our fingers crossed. Dennis Spitzer is getting ready for whatever Hurricane Sandy brings. He says when Tropical Storm Irene hit last year, it caused flooding in his Long Beach home. So this time he's going to surround the foundation with sandbags provided by the city. They're giving them out in City Hall and it's great service. And now we're uh, trying to prepare and get ahead of the curve, so to speak. And that's what city leaders are also doing, getting this very vulnerable and large beach community ready. City Manager Jack Schnurman says Irene cost a little over $2 million in damages. So they're taking Sandy very seriously. We've got our response plan underway. Uh, we have a series of uh, preparation meetings going on and we're coordinating with Nassau County Emergency Management as well as LIPA. So Schnurman says payloaders are building a stronger barrier of sand this time to try and keep the Atlantic from spilling onto the streets of the city. Longtime residents Paul and Tira Zambuto, who live right across the street from the boardwalk, say this time they hope the berm holds. And everybody's got that fear, but the good outweighs the bad here. I mean, Long Beach is a beautiful place to live. Till night days like this. <laughs> Now, residents can pick up sandbags at the police station throughout the weekend, and they will get updates from the city's Swift 911 phone system and on Facebook and Twitter. We are here tonight in Long Beach. Christina Renault, News 12, Long Island. Right. Stone? Mandatory evacuations for the entire Barrier Island. Residents were told to secure their homes and head to a shelter or go stay with friends and family on higher ground. But it seems many people are not listening. The wind is picking up here on Park Avenue in Long Beach. Many stores are boarded up with mandatory evacuations in order. Some were headed off of the Barrier Island Sunday, including Don Moore. The city resident says he's going to his parents' Belmore home. If there's a storm, so it only takes like three or four feet, and it, you know, the street here in Park Avenue floods, even on regular rainstorms. So. And I'm not too far from there, so I don't want to deal with that. But not Stephen Schaefer. He's filling up his SUV and waiting out the storm. I'm handy. I'm a carpenter. I've got my tarps. I've got my tools. I've got everything ready. So if something does break, I'll be able to fix it. Stephen Siegel, a father of four, says he considered evacuating, but instead he's got all the food, candles, and batteries he needs when the lights go out and Sandy starts to rear her ugly head. We made preparations, put the cars to high ground. Uh, because uh, there will definitely be water in the street, so uh, we hope for the best. 
Now, I just got off the phone with the city manager's office. They're telling me there's already flooding in the west end of Long Beach. Now, to get updates on the storm, residents can go to Facebook and Twitter, and they will get updates from the city's swift 911 phone system. We're live tonight in Long Beach. Christina Renault, News 12, Long Island. Drew? That's right, Drew. We're here in Baldwin Harbor on Hay Street. Residents tell me during the height of the storm, they watched a huge wave of water come down from the canal and through the streets, and now they're just trying to pick up the pieces. It's been seven days now, no power. You know, it's cold at my house. You know, there's running out of firewood. The gas around here is, you know, can't really get it. Richie Torino says with no power and gas scarce, they feel like they've been forgotten here in Baldwin Harbor. His family lost everything in their basement, and so did Dave Jones next door. Although Jones has a generator, the Nassau Emergency Services veteran says even he wasn't ready for the wrath of Sandy and the damage she left behind. All my tools that I use to make my money, uh, obviously the house, the heating equipment, the electrical equipment, Everything's going to have to be replaced. Even worse, just across the street here on Hayes, Liz Melvin and her six kids, they've lost everything. Obviously, I can replace sheetrock and, and um, carpets and stuff, but the pictures, the baby pictures, I can't replace. So that was, that was the hardest. But one thing that's easy to see here in Baldwin Harbor is the strength of this community. Liz says everyone is helping each other and they will rebuild. I've always lived in Baldwin, so I'm going to stay. Now, as, as you can see, tree trimming crews have already been here in this neighborhood to take care of the downed trees. Of course, residents now are hopeful the next thing they're going to see are crews working on the power lines. We're here in Baldwin Harbor. Christina Renault, News 12, Long Island. Judy Drew. Uh no, Lily. In fact, there's a steady stream of shoppers, but it's not as busy as I expected. But it is still early, of course. Consumer Reports is showing that an estimated 17 million people will be hitting the malls this Christmas Eve. And of course, I had to ask shoppers today, why in the world did you wait so long? My wife forgot and she told me to go out and get the stuff today. So out with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> because I have to work. You know, I had to go to work, and this is the last minute. I wanted to come and get my mom something. She's, you know, she's a special person. I'm a student. I had finals going on. I was pretty lazy. I put everything off to the last minute. We haven't shopped at all, so we're just kind of walking around today and looking and taking... Not at all. No, not at all. We're going on a cruise in, in like 12 days from now, so we haven't thought about Christmas stuff. Now, many of these procrastinators are telling me the big advantage to last minute shopping are the great deals. Retailers are offering 50 to 60 percent off. But of course, shoppers tell me the disadvantage, they can't find the right size or the right color, etc. We're live here at the Roosevelt Field Mall this afternoon. Christina Renault, News 12, Long Island. Lily? Okay. Who can resist those big yellow eyes and little pink nose? Certainly not Dave Bernacci, animal lover and founder of Pets for Love, a nonprofit animal rescue organization. It's based here in Sunrise Mall in Massapequa, but not for long. Back in July, mall management told Dave and his furry friends that they have to leave to make way for new shops and restaurants. That was what they called a temporary lease to start. We thought it was going to become permanent, but you know, it just didn't work out that way. So the tiny group of volunteers took mall management to court. Dave says they finally agreed to let him stay at the mall until mid-December. Now there are still roughly 50 cats and two dogs here. So the question for Dave and the rest of the volunteers is after the lease runs out in mid-December, then what? Everybody here is for their heart and the love of the animals. And, and we just, we've been going too long and growing. We can't lose it, but we need help. We tried to find a mall representative for comment, but security had other ideas. It's private property and we're asking you to leave. While mall management told News 12 later they have no comment, we found some mall customers who had plenty to say. I think that's terrible because uh, especially if you take your kids and you want to buy a pet or you want to rescue a pet, I mean, where would you go? I guess that's the way life is going to be from now on. You have, you know, the, if you have the money, you get, you get it. If you don't have the money, you're out. In Massapequa, Christina Renault, News 12, Long Island. 
Now we're outside of a Riverhead courtroom today where we've learned more disturbing details involving a Suffolk County photographer and a Hampton swimsuit fashion show back in July. Robert Liguori is accused of secretly videotaping the models undressing after the show. The assistant district attorney says now a total of eight victims have come forward and he says it's all on videotape. It's a very clear picture. Uh, you could see him transport the video from the stage to the changing room and you can actually see him set it up on the shelf and position it so he can get a full view of the room. Now, Croce says as the investigation continues, they may discover more victims. He says Logori is also a registered level two sex offender for his 2000 conviction for trafficking child pornography. In Riverhead, Christina Renault, News 12, Long Island. News 12, Long Island's Christina Renault joining us now from the newsroom with the details on this story. Christina. That's right, Stacy. During these tough economic times, many homeowners have run into trouble making their mortgage payments each month. Some turn to companies advertised online or in a local paper. But authorities say some of these businesses are not in the business of helping people, only ripping them off. I was, didn't do anything wrong. Gail Garofolo and her family are homeless because of what authorities call a vicious scam. Five years ago, she found in a weekly newspaper a company called Empire Property Solutions in Beth Page. The firm promised to refinance the mortgage on her Comac home. She signed a stack of papers and paid a hefty fee, but now... To all of it, 450 some odd thousand dollars plus. And my, it's gone. It turns out the papers she signed allowed Empire to take the ownership of her home. The company then took out a mortgage, drained the equity from the house, and stole the money. The end result, the house went into foreclosure. But the Garofalos are not the only ones. Last year, there were a record number of complaints from homeowners who have been scammed. And officials tell us this year will be just as bad. Supposed to be her angels. They were her angels. They are the devil in sheep's clothing. That's why the nonprofit advocacy group Long Island Housing Services in Bohemia has teamed up with the New York State Attorney General's office. They want to warn distressed homeowners who may think they've found the answers to their prayers. We provide free counseling services. Do not pay any upfront fees. Anyone that promises you a loan modification um, and charges you an upfront fee, it's breaking the law. In three weeks, the Garofolos have to be out of the home they've lived in for 30 years. They have nowhere to go. I'm walking away with nothing. Nothing. My children's futures, it's gone. Now, authorities tell us Empire Property Solutions is now out of business. The owners were charged with fraud. The Garofalo family will get a settlement in this case, but it wasn't enough to keep them in their home. Stone, Stacy.